The Zach Wilson experiment is officially over. It had its downs and it had, well, yeah, just some downs. It was a complete disaster and the one second overall pick in hopeful Jets savior is now a Bronco. He is by every measure a bust. Wilson just wasn't good enough and it didn't take very long to figure that out, but his career isn't over just yet. It's rare for a player to fail and then change that narrative later on in their career, but Wilson has the chance to do just that in Denver. The Monday before the 2024 NFL Draft, Zach Wilson was traded off to the Broncos along with a seventh round pick for a sixth. Basically, the once second overall pick got traded to move up 53 spots in the 200s at the draft. The Jets and Broncos are also splitting the five and a half million that Wilson has owed this upcoming season. It definitely makes sense why the Broncos would trade for another quarterback. Currently, Denver's quarterback room is trash. Russell Wilson got released at the start of the new league year after two seasons with the Broncos. He was actually benched for the last two games of the 2023 season for Jarrett Stidham, who, if the season started today, would be the Broncos' QB1. Pre-draft, that's really the guy that Zach Wilson would have to beat out in order to be the starter in Denver. Wilson is actually the much more experienced of the two, though, but regardless, it's not a pretty situation either way. Stidham has started four games, two with the Raiders in 2022, and two with the Broncos in 2023. He's thrown eight touchdowns to eight interceptions in his entire career. Then there's Zach Wilson, who did start start 33 games in New York and had 23 touchdowns to 25 interceptions. There is also a third quarterback in Denver too. Ben DiNucci. He started a game in 2020 for Dallas and was on the Broncos practice squad last year. There is probably going to be some kind of quarterback competition in camp, and I do think that will include another quarterback from the draft. Maybe Denver stays at 12 and takes their favorite quarterback left on the board, or they just go with the guy later in the draft. But I do think they will at least take one quarterback in the draft, no matter what round that is. That is, unless Sean Payton really, really likes Zach Wilson. And I will say he is talented, but he just hasn't translated well to the pros, like at all. I think the writing has been on the wall for Zach Wilson in New York for a while now. He was definitely going to have a future somewhere else. That wasn't in question. Still though, he'd really just be looked at as a developmental backup quarterback and was probably destined to be cut if the Broncos never traded for him. The Jets have their future quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. Not sure just how long that future stems out, but he is the future, at least for now. He tore his Achilles last year in week one and essentially left Wilson as the main quarterback. He'll be back or should be back very soon. The Jets did also kind of put everything with Zach Wilson the rest in the offseason when they signed Tyrod Taylor to a two-year deal. He's been in the league since 2011 and started 58 games with 65 touchdowns to 29 interceptions. If the Jets need someone to start in case Rodgers goes down again, he's capable. I do also think it's possible that the Jets take a quarterback at the draft, but it'll probably be later on. There are only two guys on the roster right now, and they could definitely use a third. Ideally, a young developmental guy that isn't named Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson came into the league with high expectations as the number two pick, and he was even a good recruit in the 2018 quarterback class, but he was far from the top. Wilson was a three-star and the 38th ranked quarterback in the class. He elected to stay near home and go to BYU and made seven starts as a true freshman. Wilson showed some promise with 12 touchdowns to three interceptions and two rushing touchdowns, but he actually declined the following year while starting nine games with 11 touchdowns and nine interceptions and three rushing touchdowns. Through his first two years in college, Zach Wilson wasn't exactly anything too special. Then, in just one year, everything changed. He had a crazy breakout season and even broke Steve Young's single season completion percentage record at 73 and a half. He threw for about 3,700 yards and 33 touchdowns with only three interceptions. And he rushed for 10 touchdowns too. It was a huge year for BYU. The Cougars went 11 and one with their lone loss coming to number 18, Coastal Carolina. BYU got as high as number eight in the country and went on to win the Boca Raton Bowl over UCF and Dylan Gabriel, 49 to 23. Zach Wilson showed out in his final college game with 425 yards and three touchdowns, while his running back, Tyler Algier, went for 173 yards and a touchdown. Washington's seventh round pick, Dax Milne, was on that team as well, as was Brady Christensen and Blake Freeland, both playing offensive line in the NFL. Also worth noting that that 
Zach Wilson actually spent all three years at BYU with Jaron Hall too, who then went on to start the two seasons after Wilson was drafted and was a Vikings fifth round pick last year. When we look back at Zach Wilson in college, you can't help but think that he's just a one year wonder. He really wasn't on anyone's radar before his last season, but then he exploded and his pro day only continued to raise his stock. He was throwing bombs and quickly rose to the potential second quarterback in the class behind Trevor Lawrence. And that's exactly what happened. The Jets took him at two and the rest is history. Looking back though, that 2021 quarterback class is straight ass. Trevor Lawrence has shown some great glimpses and is, yes, probably the franchise quarterback for the Jaguars, but it's ugly after him. Trey Lance went third overall, just couldn't stay healthy and got shipped off to the Cowboys after just four career starts. Justin Fields went to the Bears at 11 and he's had his moments for sure, but now he's the expected backup for the Steelers after getting traded. Finally, there's Mac Jones. His rookie season was great, but it's never been the same, and the former 15th overall pick was just traded away to the Jaguars. Yes, Zach Wilson is a bust, but that whole 2021 quarterback class is just awful looking back, and he unfortunately is the poster child. Wilson was named the week one starter and didn't play too bad at all in his NFL debut. The next week was a different story though. He threw four interceptions, including on his first two passes against the Patriots in week two. The Jets followed it up with a 26 to zero loss the next week before he finally got a win in week four over the Titans. He was picked off in each of his first five games, joining legendary names like Deshaun Kaiser, Zach Mettenberger, and Blake Bortles. Wilson did suffer a sprained PCL in week seven and missed four games, but he actually didn't throw a single pick in his final five games of the year, which was a big improvement. He finished his rookie season going 3-10 with 2,300 yards and nine touchdowns to 11 interceptions, rushing for four touchdowns. There was hope for the 2022 season, but it started off rocky. Wilson suffered a meniscus tear in the preseason opener and couldn't play until week four. He was later involved in a lot of drama after a loss to the Patriots, where he went just 9-22 of 22 and didn't really take take accountability for his poor play. That led to him being demoted all the way down to third string behind Mike White and Joe Flacco. For the rest of his time in New York, it felt like he only really started when the Jets had no other choice. He started two games after an injury to Mike White and got benched for Chris Strebler. Zach Wilson finished the year 5-4 and four with 1,700 yards and six touchdowns to seven interceptions with a rushing touchdown. It was clear that he wasn't the guy for the future, and the Jets decided to look elsewhere, trading for Aaron Rodgers from the Packers. Wilson was solidified as the backup, and it was time to move on, until Rodgers suffered that torn Achilles on his first drive as a Jet. Wilson then took over and had maybe the best game of his career against the Chiefs with 245 yards and two touchdowns in a near comeback, but it was still another bad year. He ended up behind Tim Boyle and Trevor Simeon on the depth chart at one point. Wilson's season and ultimately career with the Jets ended with a concussion against the Dolphins. In his final year in East Rutherford, he went 4-7 with 2,300 yards, eight touchdowns, and seven interceptions. The unfortunate reality is, Zach Wilson was never the guy for the Jets. There really was never a time when he looked like he was. Now, it's time for a fresh start, but by every measure, Zach Wilson is a bust.